Hello, everyone, and welcome to Scourge of War Waterloo, Episode 5. Uh, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Sunken Lane scenario, where we will be commanding the 1st Netherlands Brigade uh, under Bylance Command. Uh, <clears throat> this was... Um, this was the uh, the brigade that uh, in the um, 1970 movie Waterloo, Wellington was always worried about uh, uh, breaking. And um, I've seen in various historical accounts, um, some people seem to think that um, Wellington had placed Bylance Brigade kind of on top of the ridge here and exposed uh in order to, to punish them for their performance at uh, Quatre Bras, where they uh, didn't really give that great an account of themselves. <clears throat> uh, I kind of find that hard to believe. Um, while Wellington may not have had the same kind of camaraderie with his troops that, say, Napoleon had, um, that's more down to the kind of class system that was in, in place in most of, uh, you know, uh, you know, England at the time where you had the nobility and then you kind of had the, uh, you know, the peasants and the commoners. Um, and, you know, Wellington's army was largely made up of, you know, that kind of lower caste, you know, peasants and thieves and, you know, stuff like that. Um, and he, you know, th thought of his army mostly made up of, of scum, as he called them. But the idea that he would have purposely put troops in a position where they were going to get pounded on uh, and lose a lot of lives simply over vindictiveness uh, of a previous performance just doesn't doesn't sit well with me as far as um, you know his character uh, you know by all accounts uh, um, you know Arthur Wellesley was a you know honorable man a uh, a gentleman of the highest order and uh, a brilliant uh, military tactician and uh, it doesn't it just doesn't jive that he would put troops in a position solely to punish them for a previous performance um, Wellington was a master of the defense and what he was doing here uh, the position that he selected to fight this battle uh, he had actually scouted uh, beforehand you know, and had seen this ground and had, uh, you know, kind of held it in the back of his mind, uh, you know, as a place to fight a defensive battle. And what he was doing was uh, showing Napoleon basically a facade, uh, only showing him what he wanted him to see uh, in his front while his main force was hidden, you know, behind the ridge. So... I, I really don't think that that was the reason that Bylance Brigade was placed here to, um, you know, punish them for their performance at Quatre Bras. I, I, you know, I think that just that's the lot they draw. You know, that's that's where they were placed uh, as part of the facade. Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, that that seems to me to be more likely than any kind of vindictive attitude that Wellington might have had toward them. It just doesn't jive with his character, uh, at least what I know of his character. Um, so the one, th okay, as far as brigade scenarios go in this game, this is probably the most challenging brigade scenario. Um, but not for the reasons people probably think. Most people think it's probably challenging because of the fact that we command a single brigade and we're going to be attacked by an entire French corps. Uh, Derlon's Corps. And that's true. Uh, you know, we are going to be attacked by an entire French Corps. Um, but that's not really the reason the scenario is one of the more challenging scenarios. Really, the reason is because Bylands Brigade is largely made up of these uh, Dutch Belgian troops that, as I've mentioned before, are not very high quality troops. Uh, and you really have to babysit them because. They, if they get into trouble, it doesn't take much for them to run. You know, they will quickly kind of leave, leave the lines if you, uh, if they get into trouble. So the way to counter that is to do your best to keep them out of trouble, uh, to keep them from being fired on in the flank, um, keep them from taking very heavy losses, anything that's going to sap their fatigue, sap their morale, and, you know, make them want to, uh, 
you know, turn heels and run uh, because, you know, they're already wearing Nikes. They're ready to run, you know. Uh, so you kind of have to babysit them to make sure that doesn't happen. And more than anything, that's what makes the scenario uh, um, more challenging. So what I'm going to do is show you lots of ways to mitigate that, to keep them out of trouble uh, and uh, kind of protect them from, you know, getting trounced by this uh, this rather large French core that's going to be uh, uh, coming down. And one of the things we're going to do is, in, you know, uh, invite some of our allies who are taking a siesta behind the hill uh, to get involved in the fight and kind of help us out. Because um, sooner or later, if we try to hold the line all by ourselves, we will get overrun. It's just there's, there's too many French coming at us. Uh, so let's start the video here and uh, basically this is everything that I already basically covered we are covering the entire front basically of the allied left which is we're on top of the uh, the ridge kind of in a sort of sunken lane uh, I don't think it's the kind of sunken lane that you might have seen it like you know Antietam it's just kind of a wagon trail on top of the uh, the hill here and there's a whole French Corps coming at us and we only have about six battalions we need 4,000 points for a major victory uh, there is, um, there is only one objective and it's very important that we hold on to it, uh, because it's the only source of points that we're going to get, uh, besides casualties that we inflict. But as we've discussed, casualties, casualties do not really, uh, give you the kind of points you need. You have to act, actually hold the objective here. So that's going to be the most important thing. And so we're going to make sure that our center, basically where the objective is, it's right in the middle of our lines, is kind of a strong point um, of our line. So here it's just scrolling down through the biography here. And uh, as soon as that uh, is done, we will uh, launch the video here. I have the sound muted at the moment just because, the, again, the music was playing in the background. And I don't want to get like a copyright strike against me. I think it's like, you know, one of Beethoven symphonies or something. Um, so as soon as the game launches, I'll bring the volume up a little bit so we can actually hear the game some. And I'm just going to wait till I see the shrubbery line. And uh, then we'll know I can start bringing the, uh, the sound up here. And we'll go up to about... Oh, where are we here? And we'll go back to 36. That should be good enough so that you guys can hear it and still hear me. <sighs> Alright, so we're about to get our orders here. And it says, It appears the enemy is preparing for a massive infantry assault on our position. Hold the sunken lane and use, utilize it for its defensive value. You may reposition your brigade as needed to provide the best chance for success. Now, uh, historically, I don't think this was much of a sunken lane. But in game terms it provides a defensive terrain bonus. And the defensive terrain bonus in this game is pretty much generic. You either have it or you don't. And it's the same for all different types of terrain, whether you're in the woods or you're in hedgerows or, you know, behind a wall or a fence or, you know, anything that gives you that defensive terrain bonus. It's a generic defensive terrain bonus. It isn't like you get more of a defensive uh, bonus for being in the woods than you would for being behind a fence. It all just kind of works exactly the same way. So in game, this sunken road is actually going to be much more of a benefit than it probably was historically because defensive terrain bonus is just a generic bonus in this game. So uh, let's get it rolling here. Okay, now we have one unit uh, you can see we have we have uh, the objective occupied here, and like in uh, the hunters, you'll notice the objective is actually somewhat forward of our position. So again, uh, the French coming in range to contest the objective is going to be an issue. So we are again going to have to find a way to engage the French further out to keep them from cont contesting the objective. However, we can't really move our line units further out because we're going to be taking them out of the sunken road at that point, which would negate our defensive terrain bonus. So we're going to have to think of something else. And if you've been paying attention to my videos, you already know what that something else is. It's skirmishers. 
uh, I've already explained how powerful skirmishes are, and uh, this scenario is going to be no different in how we abuse them. Uh, so the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is kind of reshift some of these lines and close up some of the gaps in the, uh, the, the uh, you know, between the individual battalions and kind of tighten everything up. And these one battalion that was deployed in a skirmish formation, the entire battalion, so it was a really huge skirm skirmish formation, I'm bringing them back. I don't like the idea of doing that, of just having one battalion in, in and have the whole battalion deployed in skirmish formation. Um, because if that battalion runs, the whole skirmish line runs. Uh, and one thing that these Dutch-Belgians like to do is run. So we're going to bring them back into the sunken road as a whole battalion in line formation, and we're going to deploy some smaller units of skirmishers. You know, groups of 100 men, pretty much like I always do. Um, having that one unit out there and having the whole unit in skirmisher formation uh, it is a bad move. Um, I would absolutely bring those guys back in when you're playing the scenario because, like I said, if they run, the entire skirmish line runs. If one skirmisher unit in, you know, if I put about a bunch of hundred man skirmisher units and, you know, one of them runs, okay, there's a small hole in the line, but all the other skirmisher units are still there. So bring those guys back. Tighten up your lines and uh, in the sunken road itself, and then lie them down because the first, you know, the first ten minutes of the scenario is basically the approach march by uh, by the uh, the French. You can see them off the top of the map there, uh, you know, advancing. So you're getting bombed on by this artillery, and uh, contrary to the way artillery seems to work in every other scenario, uh, you know, in this scenario. The French guns uh, actually inflict some significant damage, and it's probably just due to the sheer volume of cannon that are set up on the French line. It's something like 80 guns. You know, it's it's a lot of guns. So even though artillery is not generally that effective, this uh, in, in Scourge of War, this kind of massed grand battery that is firing at us right now is so many guns firing at once that you know they're just they're definitely getting hits on us. You know. Uh, it doesn't cause an extreme amount of damage, but more than I know, more than you would normally know, uh, see, with, uh, you know, a couple of artillery batteries. I mean, it is a lot of guns, and I'm sure I've raised the camera up here at some point so you can actually see them firing. Uh, and you can see the shells just kind of exploding everywhere. <laughs> you can see that just the whole top of the screen there is just guns firing at us, you know, from the entire, uh, you know, breadth of the French line there. You know, so get your guys in the sunken road and then take cover. The other thing I'm going to suggest is you see these guys right here. They were originally up in here uh, on my rightmost part of the line. Um, I bring them back and put them down behind the ridge as a reserve for two reasons. One, we have artillery covering this portion of the line, plus the 95th rifles are out there in a rifle pit. The French are going to have a hard time attacking that part of the line, and they usually don't go for it. So you can afford to pull that unit out. And the reason you want to keep a re, uh, one of these units in a, res, uh, a reserve is, one, it can become a source of skirmishers if you need to start putting more skirmishers out without weakening your main lines in the, in the sunken road and pulling your skirmishers from them. And two, it's just always good to have a reserve unit in case you need to plug a big hole, especially with these Dutch-Belgian troops who, as I've said, aren't great troops. Uh, they're not awful, but, you know, some of them are prone to run, and you may need to plug up a hole quickly. So it's always good to have a unit in reserve. So as, here you can see the uh, a good shot of that huge French battery, you know, basically all these fellas up here just bombing away at us. And it, I mean, it's just the whole length of the line. It's just guns. Uh, and you can see the... Uh, the advance of Derlon's Corps approaching here, and we've got skirmishers set up to meet them, and the reason we're doing that is to get them to deploy further back and, uh, you know, keep them from coming within range to contest the objective. Because if they contest that objective, it's going to be really hard to get back. And we're going to need to get it back, because that's really the only source of big points for us. I think it's worth something like 100 points per minute. Uh, and as you can see, the center battalion, the one I have clicked on here, kind of, they're 
down here off the map. They'd already taken something like 30 losses just from the artillery bombardment. These guys right here. Uh, they were definitely catching the worst of it as far from the artillery. Um, you know, even, yeah, 28, 20, 26 casualties they've taken just from the artillery. Um, you know, so even in, uh, even, you know, in a sunk, in the sunken road and laid down like that, they were, uh, they were taking some heavy casualties from the artillery. So it's time to get this thing cooking now. The skirmishers have engaged. The French have deployed further back. They're sending some columns forward here. Now, again, the thing you got to watch for here is are they going to charge or are they, are they going to form line? If they charge, the skirmishers are going to retreat. But that's okay. I, you're making units waste a charge if they do that. But it doesn't look like what they're doing here. They're actually forming line and they want to get into a firefight with us. Now, as I've said, Skirmishers generally will inflict more casualties than they take. However, there is something of a sweet spot to uh, the distance you want to maintain. If you're up really close to a line unit like this, even with skirmishers, that's just a lot of fire that they're really in prime musket range for. So you're going to see I'm going to start to use the fallback while engaged uh, button and have these skirmishers start to give ground while they're firing. And I'm also starting to deploy more skirmishers because I realize I'm going to need to thicken the skirmish line up a little bit. And here we go. Look at this. These Dutch Belgian troops, man. They just love to run. Off they go. And, uh, you know, this is something I, I said we would have to worry about and be ready for. These guys have to be babysitted because they, uh, they are track stars. You know, they, they want to run. They really haven't been hit that hard, but they're just, you know... What can I say? That's why I've never been impressed with these Dutch Belgian troops. But we have time to uh, kind of get them back together and move them back into position because we do have our skirmishers out front uh, delaying the French advance here. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to try and kind of move them right back to where they ran and uh, hopefully they'll stand a little steadier this time. You know, they've, they've taken some casualties. They're getting bombed on by the artillery, but... Uh, you know, hopefully we can get them to uh, get back there. And, uh, you know, there are guys that were basically have uh, occupying the objective. Right now it's being held because the skirmishers are in range of the objective. But, uh, you know, skirmishers are, you know, small numbers of men. We really need to get a good-sized unit by the objective to make sure we hold it without having to keep a constant eye on it. So there they go. Get into that sunken road, fellas. All right, hopefully they stay there and uh, actually stand their ground. So far, our skirmishers are doing a pretty good job. Um, we've uh, kind of stopped the French in their tracks. They've engaged further out from where we want they want to be, and they're not, you know, able to contest the objective at the moment. However, our skirmishes are giving ground, and that's because they're a little too close for comfort. Uh, as you can see, they are taking some casualties as we withdraw. You can see some of our uh, troops on the ground there that have died. Uh, and basically because they're just a little too close to these line units. Uh, they are inflicting more casualties than they take, but they could be taking less if we back them up and kind of create some distance between them and the, line, the French line units. Uh, that also has the benefit of drawing the French a little bit closer, and this artillery battery that we have behind us, uh, that you can't see at the moment, but, uh, if they, if the French get close enough, the, uh, artillery will be able to start hitting them with canister and, you know, really start putting a wallop on them. Now you can see here that the, uh, some of these units off to the, uh, the left, French units are starting to come in, starting to push forward on the, that part of the line and could be a threat to our flank. Uh, they're kind of set up kind of on our flank as it is right now, but they're a little too far out uh, to really for it to count as flank fire. But it's something to watch. And, uh, you know, when that happens, we'll, uh, we'll 
to show you how to deal with that. So the first uh, French unit there has decided that uh, they've had enough of it, and they're they're backing up. But there's still a lot more out there, and uh, you know they're going to keep coming forward. Uh, we also have the 95th Rifles, who are armed with rifles, um, and they're in the sand pit over here, and they're in a good position to fire into the French flank. With rifles, they have greater range. As I said, this unit would be a source of skirmishers if we need them, um, without having to actually take them from our frontline units and weaken them, because they're actually shooting too. So what we're doing is just thickening up our skirmish line here. Um, you know, as I said before, skirmishers in this game are abusable, um, and when you start really ganging ganging them up like this, they become borderline broken. It's almost an unfair advantage, simply because of the fact that they get hit less and uh, inflict more casualties than they take. And the more you kind of stack that, the more abusable and the more broken it gets. Um, the only time you really have to worry about not doing that is if there's cavalry, or if there's enemy cavalry, because skirmishers have no defense against cavalry. But there's no cavalry in this scenario. Uh, there's no cavalry in a lot of scenarios, to be honest with you, and that's part of what makes um, skirmishers so overpowered in, in these scenarios. Is there's only, you know, you have to get into the, you know, large scenarios, the core and the army scenarios, before you really start to see cavalry kind of in every single scenario. Uh, at that point, then you have to think about how you use skirmishers a little more smartly. Uh, but, you know, brigade scenarios, division scenarios, a lot of them don't have any cavalry in them. And uh, that basically leaves you free to exploit the power of skirmishers uh, in this game. And uh, you'll see through uh, all these brigade scenarios and most of the division scenarios, I abuse the hell out of skirmishers because of how strong they are. You know, and you know, right now they're they're holding back a, you know at least two French divisions here. We got one uh, one division that looks like two brigades in front of us here over here, and then another at least two brigades uh, on our left. So we're probably looking at uh, you know at least two two full French divisions that we're taking on right now. You know, with just a brigade and that's the power of skirmishers to just you know, kind of stop these units in their tracks. You know, and uh, as this goes on, you'll see me start to thicken out the line with more and more skirmishers so I can bring more and more firepower to bear. And I'm starting to kind of move it so that we're kind of engulfing the French on their, uh, on their left, our right. And over on the left, the exact opposite is happening. French have a huge number of troops on our left and are trying to uh, engulf our left. And again, I always, when I deploy skirmishers, remember in episode one I told you, let the AI start moving them first. As soon as you, as soon as they start moving, then this uh, toolbar will flip to the skirmisher line and then you can just take command and place them where you want. Uh, but the whole point of letting the AI move the skirmishers initially is just to get the toolbar to flip to the skirmisher so that if you need to recall them later on, you can. Uh, in this scenario, I don't think we do too much recall. We're going to pretty much have the skirmishers out there the entire time. So uh, the battle is proceeding apace here. This is kind of exactly what I wanted to happen. Get our skirmishers out front, kind of stop the French, you know, in their tracks before they could reach the objective and be able to contest it and kind of bottle them up on the field here so that we can shoot at them with our skirmishers and let the artillery that we have set up behind our line here kind of pound away at them. As you can see, off to the left here, right here, they are really pushing forward. Uh, and they're actually pushing kind of beyond our left and, you know, at some point, they're going to turn their attention to us here. And uh, what we're going to do at that point, there are way back behind this hill here, there are some uh, British troops who are taking a lazy siesta behind the hill here, drinking tea and whatever it is British troops do. 
uh, when they're not fighting. Uh, in order to get them involved, anytime you want to get units involved that are not under your command, the key is to let an enemy unit or goad an enemy unit into coming within engaged distance of those units. We uh, Basically what we're going to do is refuse our line and let the French come into that area so that they come within engaged distance of those uh, allied troops of ours that we don't control. And at that point, then those troops will become involved in the battle. So whenever there's troops that are not under your direct control that you want to get into a battle, you need their help, the best thing to do is to withdraw towards them so that when the enemy come in contact with you, they're also coming in contact with those troops, and that essentially activates them and gets them into action. I'm really pulling a lot of skirmishes out of this unit, aren't I? It's a good thing these Dutch-Belgian units are, uh, you know, pretty good-sized battalions. Uh, I can afford to split off a lot of skirmishers and, uh, you know, not really reduce the battalion strength to, you know, really low levels. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm just trying to thicken up the center of our line. The center of our line is the most important part. We can afford to have our right push back. We can afford to have our left push back. We can just refuse them and, and kind of withdraw towards the, uh, you know, the center. But if our center gets pushed back and we lose that objective, then we're in trouble because that's where all our points are coming from, the objective. But well, fortunately, we are doing pretty good here. Um, you can see these are all the uh, the British units that are, you know, back here taking a nap. And we will be getting some of those units involved later on. But for now, we're holding nicely. There's a lot of French bodies on the ground in front of us. Uh, now, we haven't actually routed any French units yet. We have made a few withdraw, and they will regroup and come back at us. Um, but, you know, with each withdrawn unit, uh, a fresh unit kind of comes in to take up their place. And eventually that'll cycle kind of back to you know, the initial units uh, that withdrew coming back at us. And they're never as potent the second time around um, because, you know, they've just lost some men, they've lost some morale, they've lost some fatigue, and, uh, you know, they're less likely to be as aggressive the second time around as they are the first time. So it's this first wave of attacks that is probably going to be the trickiest. And uh, so far it's going pretty good. see another uh, column coming up here and we are shooting at them and they just kind of stopped and here they come again now the question of course is always are they going to stop and form line or are they going to charge and see these two British units back here? These are the guys we're going to want to get get involved in this battle. And you can see that uh, there are a lot of Dutch and Belgian troops up there just kind of streaming back from the lines. Uh, the Allied portion of the line there is uh, falling apart. So these guys are coming pretty close. I'm pretty sure they're thinking about charging right now. They're definitely a coming. That, but they're going to get nothing for it because we can withdraw and uh, be out of there. The French will then reform and we will start shooting at them while they reform. So they're being shot at by this skirmisher group right here as well as this line battalion here. And they're going for another charge and again they're charging skirmishers. Now this is good because they're wasting their charge. The skirmishers will just run away. And the uh, the French troops are basically wasting their fatigue. All the while now, they're getting shot at by these guys, they're getting shot at by these guys. 
And, you know, as I've said before, you're only going to get a certain amount of charges out of a unit before, you know, they're not really uh, going to be able to charge again. Um, and so that's kind of what we want to see happen. Now they're, they're getting one more charge out here and we're going to withdraw this line here. But I, I have a feeling that's it for them. Their, their charges are done. Because all the while that they're reforming here, they're getting shot at. You know, and they're losing men. And uh, you can see uh, one of our skirmisher units has been charged and they are running away on their own. And now this uh, French assault column is right up in front of our line unit here. And uh, this is going to be some deadly close range fire here. And I'm actually going to back the skirmisher off so that they're not too close. This is about where it's about to start getting hairy. Uh, you know, the French have pushed forward now. Um, they've driven off a good chunk of our skirmisher units. And uh, if they can exploit, get enough units up here and exploit that breach, they might be able to push forward and actually break our left here. Um, but these units that they charge with are not going to be the ones to do it. It's going to be, uh, you know, they've already charged. So it's going to be the question of can they get fresh units up here at the time. So I'm kind of moving the skirmishers back into uh, a position behind the sunken ridge, or the sunken road, where they can uh, start aiding the uh, line units and firing at the enemy. But our left has been turned. Here we are. We now have French units on our immediate left flank and have driven back our, our skirmishers. So at this point, this position is going to be very difficult to hold on to for long. And, uh, you know, if you get yourself in a situation like this, uh, the best thing to do is actually not try to hold on to this position. Uh, it's best to try and do what I'm doing right here, just withdrawn. And I'm going to basically refuse our left flank and present a new front to the enemy and make them come to us again. But this time they're gonna get close enough uh, that they're gonna activate some of our allies that are laying down back here, these fellas, this whole brigade back here that's just, you know, laying on their tummies, taking a nap. Uh, we're gonna get them involved and that's gonna really help us out in pushing back these French that have basically outflanked us at this point and driven our left away, you know. Um, but as I said, the most important thing for us is to hold the center of our line, where this objective is. And we're still holding on to that pretty good. As you can see, we have driven off a lot of the French directly in our in our front here. These guys are running, these guys are running, these guys are running now that we're here. So we're starting to repulse this breakthrough. But a lot of these French troops that had previously broken the far left of our line up here are now turning their attention towards us. So as soon as they kind of come in here, that's when this British Brigade will start to activate and uh, help us in pushing these lines back. As you can see, more assault columns are coming forward at this point. However, our right is doing splendidly. I mean, look at this mess of French bodies. We have driven everybody off. So the trouble is on our left. And that's mostly because the, these Dutch Belgians that were stationed over here, you can see a lot of them dead on the ground, have basically given way and opened up a huge crack in our line, allowing the French to now pour in on our left, you know, as our line has basically been split. So we have got to get these fellas taking a snooze back here into action. You can see one unit has just risen up from their nap and are getting ready to engage. So let's keep, we're going to split off some more skirmishes here and just, you know, we're trying to get more firepower on the line. And um, send them to this weak spot here, this, this, this part of the line now that has, uh, has kind of started to bend back on itself. And as you can see now, the French are really, really pushing into our left. Luckily for us, our British allies are done with their tea done with afternoon tea and are now ready to fight and I think these guys are in kilts actually so they, they may be Hanoverians or uh, you know Scotsmen so whoever they are uh, I'm happy they're now awake and ready to fight because
because uh, it's getting a little hairy on the left here. There's still a lot of French units that could be pushing forward on our left there. The right, I'm not so worried about. We have a lot of skirmishers out on the right, and uh, their forces have seemed to thin out a lot. Don't forget, a lot of the left part of Durland's Corps was also over here is La Haye Sainte, and, uh, you know, at least a brigade of that first division of their Lance Corps is tangled up fighting um, for the possession of Light Sant here. So the, uh, the attack on our left was never going to be as strong as the attack on our right because some of those forces had to be diverted to attack Light Sant and La Haye Sainte. So this unit here has really moved too far in, and they're getting fired upon by these guys, and these guys, and these guys, and uh, they've decided, you know what, we are a little too far forward, and uh, let's make, let's beat a hasty retreat and rejoin our men out here. And now the British have deployed, or these Hanoverians here, have deployed some skirmishers. I am happy to see that. You don't often see the AI uh, um, really use skirmishers to the degree I do. Uh, so maybe it's uh, you know picked up on my strategy here and uh, decided to deploy some skirmishers on its own. Not really, of course, but you know. more skirmishers are always a good thing. And again, we have some more skirmishers coming in. Way to go, AI. Just keep just keep following what I'm doing here. I'm leading the way. So we still have some more units in reserve here. And these units would activate if our actual line got pushed back from the sunken road. And that would give us a chance to retake it if we lost it. But they will not activate until enemies come within range of them. And ideally, we don't even want that to happen. We don't want to get pushed off the sunken road. That's, you know, that's our position right there. That's what we're there to hold. And uh, that's how we'll get the most amount of points. So the situation is starting to stabilize. Uh, a little bit on the left here, now that we have uh, our British allies and our Hanoverian allies helping us out. You know, the French did penetrate our line on the left, but because we gave ground and basically fell back on our own lines, uh, we, we pretty much mitigated the amount of damage they actually did with that penetration. Because really where they need to penetrate is here. They need to take this position in order to drive us off of it so that we're not getting points anymore from it. Uh, and uh, that's what um, that's what they had a really rough time doing because we deployed skirmishers kind of right in front of that position and it's also covered by artillery. So instead they tried to punch around us and kind of roll us up but uh, we gave ground and presented a new front uh, to the enemy, and that allowed our allies to get involved and kind of save the day for us. And now that they're involved, uh, you know, things look, things look a lot better for us. And other than that first unit, you know, these guys that kind of ran off at the beginning, um, our boys have st stood pretty steady. And a lot of that is just down to protecting them with skirmishers um, and not letting them really take a significant amount of losses. You can see it's not like we haven't taken any losses. There's some bodies. You know, there's definitely bodies on the ground. We've taken some casualties too. But uh, not nearly as many of them as we've inflicted on the French. got a whole bunch of uh, Dutch-Belgian skirmishers and Hanoverian skirmishers. 
basically holding our position on the left now. And uh, we've basically collapsed the French left over here on our right. They're all running. They're all uh, beating a hasty retreat. And they're even starting to get pushed back over here now, you know, because now some of these other British units have woken up and uh, are pressing the attack back, back on them. So it looks like we're getting ready for a general British advance here as some of these units are preparing to move forward. And it looks like the French retreat has begun. These guys are all starting to fall back now. now historically, this attack was not successful by the French. Uh, you know, they took a huge pounding from the artillery as they were coming up. Uh, and then when they did finally reach the point where they were starting to crack the British lines, of course, that's when the, uh, the, the famous Scots Grays charge of cavalry, of the heavy cavalry, happened and basically broke up the entire attack and, you know, basically routed their lines core kind of back to their lines. And uh, then the Scots Grays got overzealous and started going out too far in the pursuit, and they got shot up by this artillery here all along the ridge. They got countercharged by some French, lan French lancers and uh, were decimated themselves. Of course, we don't need the, we don't need the Scots Grand Cap. We're going to hold this line all by ourselves. Because we know how to abuse the power of skirmishers. So the, uh, while there are still a lot of French troops out on the field there, um, I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of the gusto has, uh, kind of gone out of them. A lot of the wind has gone out of their sails, uh, as we pretty much broke it up, the, uh, organization of their attack. There's not too much left over here on the French left, a couple of skirmisher units that, uh, are basically being run off. Because they're they're you know they're just one un one skirmisher unit facing you know, a whole line of skirmisher units. And what I'm doing is you see these guys are kind of tired, so. What I'm basically doing is some of these skirmisher units that have been in the battle for quite a while, I'm recalling them, and I'll basically, you know, either plug my line with a fresh skirmisher unit, or I'll condense my line, because at this point there's not much going on over here, so maybe I can kind of shorten my skirmisher line a little bit, and wow, look at all these fellows gathered up here. That is a lot of allied troops now that have basically completely anchored our left now. And uh, we're going to see what they're going to do, whether they're just going to hold there or advance and try and pursue the uh, retreating French. If they do and actually are able to drive these French out of here, then what we can do is just retake our position with this uh, battalion here and kind of retake the sunken road area that we lost earlier on. And, uh, okay, we are at nearly 5,000 points here. So I believe we, yeah, there we go, directly, 5,000 points exact. I think we needed 4,000 for a major victory. So we have done a hell of a job here. You know, there were a couple of hairy moments uh, as the French broke through our, our left here and kind of forced us to fall back on our own line. Um, but as you can see by the retreating French here, that has largely been broken up by the intervention of our uh, allies uh, in the British and uh, Scots uh, Hanoverian. Uh, groups that have kind of come up to help us out. So we have a lot, we have a lot of troops on this part of the field now. So we're just waiting to see what they're going to do. These guys, these guys, these guys, they're not under my control. Um, and we're waiting to see if the, uh, the allies, our allies are actually going to pursue them and uh, try and route these French from the field here. And like I said, if they do, it will put us in a position where we can retake the sunken road. It looks like I'm thinking about that right now as I'm advancing some skirmishers into the sunken road to basically take that position back. 
And I definitely feel like the Allies are thinking about advancing here. They're, uh, they're forming up here and moving forward. There are still a good sized amount of French troops over there on the left. So that could be a hell of a battle. But there's not too much going on over here. Uh, you know, you can bring up one unit here. They're, they're just going to get, sh these guys are just going to get shot at by these guys, these guys, these guys. You know, just kind of whole group in front and they won't, they won't stand there for very long. You know, that's kind of max engaged just as, as it is. You know. So you can tell they're really not making a wholehearted effort to try, to try and, uh, to try and come up here. In fact, they're looking like they don't really want to fight at all, and they're probably going to run away. So you can see the mass exodus has begun. All these French troops are withdrawing. They still have, you know, a few troop, a few battalions up here, but by and large, they are uh, they are hitting the bricks on mass. So we have pretty much completely repulsed them at this point. And we also have some more reinforcements coming in from kind of our right center over by uh, Hugomont and um, kind of to the right of Playa Sant. So we have now, looks like a brigade moving in, a whole brigade moving in kind of through our right across the, our front there. So some more reinforcements. Now, our job is not to help them out. Our job is simply to hold this objective, and, uh, you know, that's uh, what we're going to do. I see a lot of people that play the scenario, and, you know, they don't know about objectives and how important it is to hold them. And they end up running out across the field and getting themselves in all sorts of situations that are, you know, far away from the sunken road. And uh, that's how they end up losing the scenario. Uh, you know, just hold our position. That is what we have to do in this scenario. You know, if uh, our allies choose to actually go out and pursue the retreating enemy, more power to them. I'm happy to see that happen. But uh, our job here is just to hold our position and get points from this objective. So the French have really been pushed back now. Um, Virtually no units in our front. Let's take a look at uh, what's what's going on over at La High Sant here, and you can tell they've pushed our troops out of the. Uh, there was some fighting in the uh, the Orchid here. They've obviously pushed our troops back into the fort, but uh, now that they're held up inside the farmhouse here, the French are just kind of stuck outside trying to shoot them out, which probably will not happen because there's just not enough troop, French troops there, and they are only shooting at one side of the farmhouse as opposed to. Uh, like I said, if you're trying to take a garrison building, it's better to try and shoot at them from kind of all sides if you can. It'll make them withdraw a lot faster. And it looks like our allies are getting ready to push, uh, push forward here and uh, drive the rest of these French from the field. You know, some units here are still trying to come forward and make a fight of it, but... Uh, the cohesiveness of this attack has largely broken down, and I think these guys are going to get pretty much pounded by this uh, British brigade that's coming in uh, on the right side, kind of off the screen here. As you can see, a uh, whole mess of troops is coming in. Uh, these are, And these are fresh, unengaged troops, whereas these guys are fought and retreated, fought and retreated a couple of times now, and there is a lot of troops coming in here, you know. They are probably going to just sweep across the field and push these guys back very, very quickly, and basically sweep our front clear of the enemy. Meanwhile, uh, the uh, our allies over here are beginning to push forward. So, our front is very soon to be clear, I think, of the enemy. And now that the situation has cooled off over here, this regiment, or this battalion, which has been involved in some very heavy fighting, uh, I think I'm now going to bring back behind the lines uh, and give them a chance to re 
recuperate some of their fatigue and morale because they were involved in some very heavy fighting. You know, in that kind of left corner uh, of our left flank there. Oh, and it looks like these French do not even want any part of these uh, allies here that are coming at them. And, uh, yeah, this is a big brigade. These all look like pretty big units right here. You can tell because it's like their assault columns are like, you know, five or six lines deep. So these are big units coming at them. So as this portion of the line now is now being covered by uh, our allies, I'm recalling a whole bunch of skirmishers and kind of getting them out of there. They're, I don't think they're, they're necessary any longer. The, uh, the French retreat is in full effect here. You know, they're, they are kind of done at this point. See, they've lost all the ground that they gained. That at one point they were, you know, up in here, and now they've completely lost all that ground. And some of these units are attempting to cover the retreat as these allied units are pushing forward, but uh, they don't seem to have the stomach for it. So as you can see, the real key to this scenario is using skirmishers to protect your lines in the sunken road so that um, they don't get shot up and run and you lose the position. Um, you know, like I said, skirmishers are very, very strong when it comes to just trading fire. And if they get charged, you just retreat. You just They just run. So that has the... Uh, the double effect of the skirmishers really don't take any losses because they just run and it forces the enemy to waste a charge on skirmishers you know and when they're done charging and get nothing for it they have to reform at which point they'll be getting fired on by other skirmishers by your line units in the sunken road so that's really the key to protecting uh, what is basically a handful of battalions against you know an entire French corps attacking your position is to put lines of skirmishers out front to kind of stop the French assault before it can really get to your main lines. And it also, you know, keeps the French from getting close enough to contest the objective, which, as I said, is kind of forward of your position, just like it is in, uh, in uh, the hunter scenario, where you have to kind of move your troops forward in front of the objective to actually protect it from becoming contested by the French as they come into the woods. Here, same thing. We want to put the skirmishers kind of out in front of our lines, both to protect and screen the lines in the sunken road and to force the French to deploy further out so that they can't come within range of the objective to contest it. And we are at 6,300 points, so way more than we need, you know, uh for a major victory. We're about 2,300 points above what we needed for a major victory. So as you can see, it's, you know, this scenario is entirely winnable. It's all just about how you protect the units in the sunken road. And my answer to pretty much anything is the curvatures, <laughs> you know, because they're so strong. So if I need a position protected, I will almost always resort to just deploying uh, a ton of skirmishers uh, in front of the position I need protected because they're so good. I don't know, who are these guys running? What, what kind of fight were they doing? There's nobody over here. What are you guys running from? Well, they took some losses. They must have been in the fort. They must have run out of the fort. 
French are starting to bring more and more units to, get, to bear against that fort. And if they start, if they start, you know, kind of shooting on multiple fronts of this fort, they might have a chance of clearing more units out and actually gaining possession. Of it. Has nothing to do with, uh, you know, anything we're doing here. We've already won. little ground shot of what it looks like from the sunken road. See all the French bodies out there. Our boys did a good job. And there we go. We got our major victory. We only took 350 casualties. A lot of that was artillery fire. And uh, we inflicted 1,700 casualties. So we did pretty good. You know? The numbers don't show the... Uh, you know, the rather hairy situation we faced there when they broke through our left. Um, but we handled that well. Uh, you know, we didn't panic and we basically just backed up and gave the French room to kind of come into that area behind the sunken road and hang themselves by coming close enough to our allies to basically activate them and get them involved in the battle. Which is kind of what we wanted to happen at that point because... Uh, that would have been a different story if there were no allies behind us to back us up, you know? We would have had to just keep giving ground and keep giving ground. So, uh, yeah, we did pretty good here. And I'm just showing you some of the stats here. And that's pretty much it for, uh, for that scenario. Um... In the next scenario, we'll be taking a look at uh, Lahai San, which takes place kind of just after this attack had failed and uh, the French had regrouped. And uh, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the uh, French attack on Lahai San that occurred after this. Um, and that's actually a carryover scenario. Um, you actually have to play Derlan's assault from the French side. You have to play the, uh, the core scenario. Um, to unlock the scenario. I've already played every scenario in the game, so I've unlocked every scenario. Um, but yeah, you will not initially have access to the scenario until you play uh, the core, the French core scenario, Derlan's Assault. And you have to get, you have to get a major victory in, um, in carryover scenarios to unlock the, the next scenario that it unlocks. So uh, we will cover Derlan's assault when we get to core scenarios, but I'm doing all the brigade scenarios, all the division scenarios, and all the core scenarios, and I'm kind of going in that uh, in that order. So even though you can't unlock uh, La High Sant until you do that core scenario, I'm just covering it here because it is a brigade scenario. Uh, so for that reason, and we'll take a look at that one next. So that's it, fellas. Take it easy.